Hello and welcome back to my studio. Over the next five weeks I'm going to be bringing you a series on Impressionist painting. We're going to cover five important topics to create a vibrant and strong Impressionist style painting. So stick around and we're going to start with biggest tip number one coming up. It's no secret that I love Impressionist painting and it's been the biggest influence on me and my style of painting. In fact, as a child in art class, when we started learning about the Impressionists, that's when I woke up and paid attention. And it's pretty obvious that I love the outdoors, nature, sunlight. That's what dominates most of my paintings. And the Impressionists went after that. Tip number one is Pursue the light. How to create a strong light effect. And I'm going to show you a few tips to help you achieve just that in the little demonstration coming up. Now before we start that, remember I have a complete course on how to paint like an impressionist. And there will be a link to that below. And in that course you will go into impressionist painting in a lot more detail. From a beginner through to a more advanced style of painting. But it's all there for you to have a look at in your own time. For now, let's have a look at creating a strong light effect. So before we get out the paints, let's answer the question, what is a light effect in the context of Impressionist painting techniques? And what we mean is a light effect refers to the way that light interacts with the subject being painted. Impressionist painters were interested in capturing the way the light changes the appearance of objects in the landscape. And they often used loose brushwork, bold colors, and broken brushstrokes to suggest the effects of light and atmosphere. For example, an Impressionist painter might use bright warm colors to suggest a bright sunny light or use cooler muted colors to suggest the soft diffuse light of a cloudy or overcast day. They would also use broken or dappled brush strokes to suggest the way sunlight is filtering through the trees, also on water for example, to capture the shimmering effect of light on the surface of the water. So by focusing on the effect of light Impressionist painters were able to create paintings that captured the sense of movement, energy, vitality of the, the scene. They were more concerned with mood and atmosphere than trying to be realistic or accurate with describing a shape. The first tip is to focus on the light. Ask where is the light coming from. If you're painting outdoors, the light will be coming from the sun then you need to know what is the direction of the light. Where is it coming from? The left, right, higher up or at a lower angle? The next question is, is the light warm or cool? On a bright sunny day, the light will be warm. But on an overcast day, the light may be cool. Also, if you're painting indoors, then it's also a question of what is the light source? Different light bulbs emit warm or cool light and that's going to influence the light of the subject and also the light of the shadows. Now on a sunny bright day outside usually the shadows will be cool and the impressionists like to depict this using blue or blue violet shades of color because the color of warm sunlight was of course yellow. So anything that was more or less the complement to that would indicate a cool color like shade. The question is how does this light affect the scene? It's often the case of finding an expressive color as well. For instance a beach scene where there is strong warm sunlight. You've been on the beach perhaps barefoot and you remember how hot the sand could get. How are you going to depict that as an impressionist painter? You can't just paint the sand its local color of, let's say, a generic yellow ochre, because that's not going to convey the heat. So an Impressionist would probably choose something like a pink color, like a yellow pink perhaps, to indicate heat. 
Also a cool color, just the opposite. There will be something like a cold blue color, maybe some cobalt blue is being used and so on. The next tip is to use a limited palette of colors. A limited palette of colors is going to immediately give you a harmony of colors since most of the colors you mix are going to come from that limited number of colors. If you are learning how to paint, I suggest you work with the primary colors, something like a cadmium red light, a cadmium yellow lemon and ultramarine blue. As you advance, you can add the warm and cool versions of those colors, like cerulean blue would be a cooler blue, cadmium yellow deep would be a warm yellow and alizarin crimson would be a cool red. By mixing your colors from those essential colors, you're going to get as I said, a harmony, but you can also manipulate the warmth or the coolness of those colors at the same time. Using a cool version of a color will give you the cool colors that you're looking for. And if you're painting a shadow, you are going to know that cool colors are required. It's as simple as that. It is asking yourself, what is the effect of the light on that object? Is it making it warmer because it's direct bright sunlight? Or is it cool because it's in shadow and the sunlight is striking some other part of the, the scene? And therefore you can mix your colors accordingly. And finally, focus on creating a contrast between light and shadow to give the painting that strong light effect. Especially in your focal area, the edges between the light colors and the shadow colors will be much stronger but in other areas you'll make the edges softer. But by having that strong contrast between the light and the dark, you're going to attract the eye to that area and it's going to be obvious that there is a strong light effect happening. As you see when you go outside, you'll notice immediately where the sun is hitting the landscape directly and where there is shade. And if you're on a hot day, you'll probably go to the shade and sit there to get a bit of relief from the hot sunlight. How do you convey that in a painting? Well, you have to create that illusion by having that strong contrast. So it's obvious to the viewer there is a strong light outside and the shadow looks so inviting and cool you'll immediately be emotionally drawn into the painting and feel that heat and feel how pleasant it would be to go sit in the shade. Now that's what the Impressionists were after. They wanted to bring that feeling. It wasn't simply about coloring in a finely drawn painting. That was considered to be a very poor effort at a painting. You had to bring in that emotional content through the use of color, broken brushwork, and using color temperature and edges and more technical things like that. But if you focus on the contrast between light and shadow, you'll have taken a big step into creating an impressionist painting. Well, I hope you found some useful information that you can use in your next painting. That's the whole object of this painting channel. It's a practical channel where you can apply the tips to your painting. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the forthcoming Impressionist painting series, make sure you've subscribed to this channel right now. Hit notifications as well. And it'd be great if you could give this video a like if it was useful to you. Now don't forget I also offer a free starter course. You can find the link in the description up here. And while you're checking that out, you can also have a look at the How to Paint Like an Impressionist course. That's what we're all about. Well, until next time, enjoy your painting and cheers for now. Mm -hmm.